Well, welcome again to Christian Answers. This is Pastor Jeff Short. Glad to have you along for our discussion today. We're going to continue talking about what's been in the headlines lately, something that relates to Christianity, something that relates to philosophy, theology, culture, worldview, something that impacts the lives of everyone or has the potential to on to impact the lives of everyone, and that is the UFO phenomenon that we've been hearing about in the news all the time. Uh, there seems to have been someone in charge or some switch has been f- flicked, and all of a sudden it's okay to talk about UFOs, it's okay to talk about aliens, potential little green men from other civilizations. It's okay to talk about all these things because somebody in the news media or big tech or someone in government or some group, some shadow government, uh, if you want to go that far, has decided, okay, it's okay to talk about aliens, UFOs, and those sort of topics. And so because of the media's push right now in talking about this, because the U.S. government is now declassifying some photographs and videos, it is now somehow supposedly okay to talk about these things. Now, I've been talking about these things for 10 or 20 years. I've written little pamphlets about them. I've written, uh, I've given... uh, lectures and talks and videos, done videos on this channel about UFOs in the past 10 years or so. And so this is nothing new. But we have to go over it again because every few years people come on board, they realize that there is something here that needs to be explained. And now that's the whole crux of the issue right now. How do we explain the strange uh, aerial phenomenon that we see pilots see, um, aircraft carriers pick up on radar. How do we explain these things that are happening in the sky? Now, last time I talked about the most plausible option and plausible explanation is that these are actually spiritual creatures, demons. We know that demons exist. We know from the Bible that demons are real. We know that Jesus Uh, was tempted by the devil in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And he actually spoke with the devil, resisted the devil, uh, resisted the temptation of the devil. And you can read about that in the New Testament, in Matthew, and a number of the other Gospels also recorded this. So this is not new. To Christians, we know already that there are things called demons. And we also know that there is a long history of demonic activity that has been documented, very well documented in the Christian history. We know that people on occasion are somehow possessed of the devil and that it takes a lot of prayer and a lot of spiritual intensive care to get a person in their right mind healed and in Jesus' name, clear and free of these demonic spirits. We know that that is a reality. Okay, so as a Christian, as a Christian thinker, as a pastor, as a church leader, when I look at these things and what is taking place in the skies over the U.S., over the capital in some instances, over strategic locations in our country, nuclear facilities, Uh, military installations, what is going on, what is happening, what can we make sense of all of these sightings, Uh, even the bizarre things like the alien abduction stories, how can people be reporting these strange, strange tales and all of them be wrong, all of them be crazy? I don't believe that all of these people are consciously and willfully deceiving everyone just to get notoriety. Uh, Many of these accounts, especially the alien abduction accounts, these are people that are very reluctant to even talk about these things, and they have to sort of be coaxed out of their silence. It's the same way with a lot of the military pilots that see these UFOs on a regular basis. They normally don't talk about them. They don't want to talk about them because they realize that might be career suicide or they might get demoted 
uh, they would be branded as those crazy lunatic fringe UFO people. And that would be detrimental, negative to their career and actually to their life because then also they would be criticized and ostracized by friends and family and people associating with them in their position of job or military position and so forth. So most people, I believe, that see UFOs do not report them, do not talk about them, but even the ones that do cannot explain what has happened to them. And this falls into the very pattern that we see in the world of the occult. We see this in the world of the so-called seances. We see this in the world of uh, mediums, so-called mediums that are allegedly able to talk to departed souls. And you can ask questions of people who have died and they give answers and they give detailed uh, specific answers that only they would know. Very strange. A lot of these things cannot be explained by any rational logical model. And so we see a lot of the same kind of questions being raised by U by UFO observers as we do occult observers, people who go into this scientifically. Now, there have been actual universities and research studies on the whole topic of the paranormal, the occultism, ESP, and all kinds of other related fields. And they go into this seriously, scientifically, and they actually come to the conclusion often that they actually don't know what is going on. They, 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 they remind me a lot of what we're now seeing in respect to the UFO. And that brings it back to these are, in all probability, demonic spirits. Uh, they are deceiving people. They are causing sowing seeds of confusion. And they're deceiving people into thinking that there are aliens out there and that we may be invaded and all the irrational fears that people might have. And so we have to ask ourselves, you know, as Christians, how can we help people today understand what's going on? And one of the ways we can do that is to help reintroduce the basic Christian worldview to our culture that has basically rejected the Christian worldview. If you take the Bible seriously, if you look at Jesus, for example, when he talked to Satan in the wilderness and rebuked Satan in the wilderness, he's talking to an actual personality. This personality does not have a physical material body. This personality is a spiritual being. This personality was created before mankind, and at some point or another, a third of the angels, so-called the Bible says, um, rebelled against God, and the angelic realm went off in their own, and a third of the angels followed Satan or Lucifer, and they have now been opposing God ever since. So you have the vast majority of the majority of angels that are faithful and loyal and good angels still belonging to the Lord, but then you have a third of them, up to a third of them, now following the prince of darkness, Satan, and rebelling against God. And so this is the Christian worldview. Now, you may not believe the Christian worldview. You may not believe in demons. You may not believe in angels. You may not even believe in God. But this is what the Christian faith teaches. This is what the Bible teaches. Christianity has been teaching about demons and demonic possessions and how in Jesus' name you can be set free if you happen to be unfortunate enough to be possessed by a demon. This is all part of the Christian faith. And it's been well documented, it's been thought through, it's been observed, and this is a basic reality. So nothing strange here. And so whenever you have a, a choice of whether you think that these UFOs that are darting in and out and acting very strange and acting very reluctant to be observed, I mean, think of it this way. We have millions and 
perhaps now billions of high quality smartphones out there in the world. They can take high definition video like I'm shooting here. They can take high definition video, many of them now, maybe even most of them can take 4K video, which is even beyond high definition, ultra high definition. And they take fantastically good quality pictures. I mean, just go back 20 years ago and to get the quality of pictures that come out of just a ordinary smartphone, you would have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars. Now you can buy a phone for under hundred dollars that can take autofocus, uh, auto exposure, all of these features, high profile professional features and give you high quality photographs on all of these smartphones out in the world. Why hasn't one person snapped a high quality, high resolution photo or video of a UFO so that we can actually see it in detail? Why are they always fuzzy? Why are they always blurry? Why is there always shaky video or smudges or smears in the photograph? This is the very kind of thing you get in the world of a cult where you had in its heyday, for example, um, spiritism. You had in its heyday where people would go into these rooms, Victorian rooms and, and have seances and supposedly contact the dead. You'd always have these little uh, pictures of ghosts and goblins and the images of people that have died and gone on to the next world. And it's always kind of blurry, always kind of dark. It's never a totally clear, clear, total, uh, crystal clear picture. So you get the same thing with these UFO sightings, which should really trigger a most natural response and saying, hey, these are very similar phenomenon. You have the occult, the world of the occult. It's always operating. It's seemingly on the, on the edge or fringe of, of perception. And then you have the UFO. It's the same thing all over again. And so as Christians, we can help the world understand what's going on because we can just point back and say, look, we, we've already seen this before. This is already documented. We already have a history of dealing with things like this. And it, it, it fits the MO perfectly of the world of the occult. So these UFO sightings are related to the occult. And now the question is, what should we do with these and how should our governments respond to them? I think that has a lot to do with the question, what harm have they been doing? Have they been doing damage to our nation? Have they been disrupting our economy? Have they been interfering with our, um, our political operation? Have they been doing anything bad necessarily that we can detect? And the answer is, no, they have not been doing anything. They haven't shown any uh, threat to the United States or these countries of the world, as far as we know. And so this, again, fits the MO of the world of the occult for the most part. Now, there are, uh, for example, demonic possession definitely does damage to individuals who are unfortunately overtaken by these demons. And but the UFOs are not even causing as much damage as the occult and the, the fringe uh, realities that we see in seances, ESP, and all of these related fields of extra uh, sensory perception. We, we know that pure demonic possession and oppression can do great harm to individuals, but the UFOs, we really don't have any direct evidence that these UFOs have done direct damage to people or routinely do that. I guess you could say that some of the alien abductees claimed that these experiences that they went through uh, changed their life for the worse and, and disrupted your life 
and were uh, a disruption to families, I guess. Um, but for the most part, these things have done nothing and they are posing no immediate threat. And, and, and the military really has to ask itself, do we, do we want to invest a lot of money and resources dealing with something that doesn't appear to be a threat? So if, for example, the United States and the people of our country and the, and the leadership in our country all of a sudden were to get very, very alarmed by the fact that we can't explain what's going on in these UFO sightings. And so we were to, for example, uh, commission a report and study, a congressional study, and spend a lot of time and resources trying to track these things down we would probably come to a conclusion that would be no closer to the truth than we already have. And that is, if these things are demonic spirits, if they are uh, spiritual beings who are mischievous, who want to sow confusion, sow fear, uh, set up a false understanding of reality, then they would do exactly what they're doing. They are appearing, but then disappearing. They are seemingly there, but then they're not there. They can cause confusion. They cause consternation. And the more we pour ourselves into this, but the more obsessed we would get, that would play right into them because they want to disrupt our minds and our souls and our emotions more than anything else. They want to sow havoc in our society. It's kind of like um, the great psychologist uh, Carl Jung said, whatever they are, they have now introduced themselves into the cultural psyche, and they are part of our cultural landscape, our mental architecture now they are part of, because we have so many people thinking about them and so many movies made about them, and so many news reports being reported about them, that they are really becoming a very big part of our culture. And the problem with that is when you have people dealing with something they don't understand, then all of a sudden they can begin to build almost like a mythology around aliens. And we see this happening with the UFOs. I'm surprised that the scientists, the scientific community, also are so gullible in going the route of saying that these perhaps are aliens. Um, there is no shred of evidence, uh, no concrete evidence, that these things are anything um, uh, from outer space. Uh, we don't know that there are any uh, beings that are from outer space. We have never heard any beings from outer space. We have never contacted any beings from outer space. We have never seen any planets with any beings that are alive out there. We don't even know that such a thing exists, and yet scientists, based on the theory of evolution, are now trying to get people to think in terms of, well, there probably are uh, billions and billions of stars that have planets that, uh, that are inhabited by, um, you know, rational creatures, logical beings, just like we are, or even more advanced. And they do this based on the assumption that evolution is taking place all over the universe. So then when it comes to UFOs, without any shred of actual concrete evidence that these are aliens or beings from outside of our planet, uh, they jump to the conclusion that these are probably uh, UFOs or might possibly be UFOs. And this, this gullibility on the scientific community to jump to that conclusion, why would you jump to that conclusion? Uh, as a Christian minister and as a uh, gospel preacher and a Bible scholar, I look to something like the demonic theory that these UFOs are actually part of the world of the occult, 
and there is actually more concrete evidence that that is the case than anything to do with little green men. Uh, Little green men uh, are not something that we have hardly, we have no experience with, and we have no concrete evidence that they exist. But on the other hand, we do have uh, experience with people who have been demon-possessed, and we do have experience dealing with demonic entities, and very documented, heavily documented cases that these are in existence based on the biblical teaching that demons really do exist because, of course, Jesus Christ dealt with them in his ministry. The apostles dealt with them in their ministries. And so, as Christians who, who, who have the, the Bible as a worldview foundation, we look to the Bible and say, this is the better explanation than that we are being visited by aliens from outer space. I think some of the more level-headed scientists are beginning to tell people, hey, uh, get, your, get your science fiction in check right here and don't jump to irrational conclusions. If you're going to say that these UFOs are probably uh, aliens from another planet or some other uh, that are visiting our planet from a starship or something like that, you're going to have to have big evidence. You're going to have to have more than just fuzzy pictures of something out there. And so why go there? Why go to the explanation that these things are extraterrestrial when we have already an explanation that fits the facts a lot better, and that is the demon theory, that these things are part of the world of the occult. We know of, for example, incidents of poltergeist. We know of incidences of haunted homes. We know of things that are very strange, like with the Ouija board and, um, you know, mediums and explanations like this. We know these are all fuzzy and these all actually defy rational explanation. But that is exactly what we see in the Bible. The the things that occurred in the Bible and the strange events that occur in the Bible, those often defy rational explanation, scientific explanation also. And yet they're put within the context of the Christian worldview that, that really explains a lot. So we have more rational justification for seeing that these UFOs are actually part of an effort to try to get people all riled up and whipped up and emotional about the, the possibility that we may be invaded by another civilization out there, aliens, or that these aliens are supposedly uh, spying on us, uh, they're looking at us, they're examining us, uh, they're collecting information about us, and, and so on and so forth, when we really already have a model for understanding them. And if I'm correct in my understanding uh, that these things are demonic powers. How do they do what they're doing? How do they make themselves appear as spacecraft or objects floating in the sky and then accelerating at high speeds? How do they do these things that fool pilots and fool radar and fool infrared uh, detectors? How do they do those things? Well, again, Uh, These are the same questions that you could ask uh, of the occult world. How do they uh, uh, make uh, appearances uh, at seances? How do they know certain things about a person's life that only the person that departed knew? Uh, There are all these same kind of questions. But if if this theory is correct about the demons uh, playing havoc with people's imaginations— then all of the reports and all of the investigations that are thrown at these things will not yield any more concrete evidence. They will still remain vague and fuzzy, and that's probably what we're going to get when the government begins to uh, declassify all these files. They were, at one point, the government 
took a, a posture that said, look, we're going to hide all this from the public because we don't want them to panic because we don't know what it is that might panic people. It just may well be the case that as modern human beings, even in a scientific age, we may have to just leave this alone and say, you know, we don't know what these things are and there's a good probability that we may never know what these things are in terms of scientific proof. Um, if they are indeed spiritual tricksters, if you will, if, if indeed they are spiritual deceivers and we're trying to track down some scientific tangible evidence that they're aliens, then we're always going to be confused. We're always going to be frustrated because they're never going to conform to the tests that we put out there. But a, an even more sinister possibility could occur that these things are building a type of mythology in our culture. They're building an alien UFO mythology that is priming the pump for and even grander, more sinister deception, and that could be that they are trying to convince people that there are extraterrestrials out there. And then, in a, a supreme act, act of deception, they then manifest in some form the image of some ET or extraterrestrial with all of this vast knowledge of the universe and they try to impress us that they are the ones that have the answer for our problems on earth. Again, this could very well tie into something about, for example, the figure of the Antichrist. What if the Antichrist actually turned out to be a demonic deception and passed himself off as some extraterrestrial from some far off civilization in our universe? Again, Humans are vulnerable. We're all vulnerable for deception. A, mag a magician can, can trick people on a stage. Even when they know he's a magician, he can deceive them. He can trick them through sleight of hand. Um, David Copperfield, these people, Houdini in the past, they were all good at tricking people and getting them to look here and then doing something over there. And so these demonic entities these you trying to pass themselves off as extraterrestrial could cause a lot of havoc in our society. And that's why as Christians, we have to come and say, look, uh, hate to break it to you, but these things in all probability are entities that we as Christians know all about through reading the scriptures. We know all about through looking through church history these are demonic entities in all probability, and we're not going to get all worried about them. We're not going to get all worked up about them. We're not going to get obsessed by them. We're not going to get frustrated by them and require that our science explain exactly what they are because that's a lost cause. What we are going to do is we're going to keep our heads, have level heads, and we're going to look to God for his wisdom to show us how to deal with any threat that comes our way. And as if we keep our minds calm and our eyes on God, we will never go wrong. And I hope that's been a helpful commentary on this topic. We'll see you back next week on another program. God bless.